Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today I got a really important one. That's right, the Tesla Supercharging Network is finally open to GM vehicles and I'm here charging. Let's get into it. So earlier today, it was announced that GM vehicles can now access the Tesla Supercharger Network. I was at work, so I wasn't able to do a really quick video. This is the first chance I had to uh, get out and charge. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you all through the process. I'm already charging now, so you know it worked, uh, but kind of uh, go over a couple things. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to charge and activate using the GM, uh, my Chevy app, uh, like they tell you to. And then I'm going to activate it using the Tesla app and we're gonna kind of compare the experiences and then I'm gonna give you my recommendation as to which I think you should go with. All right, everybody, I'm gonna do the first charge. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and then I'll have to get off the phone so I can activate it with the app and then I will catch up with you all. All right, first things first, we're gonna plug in the adapter. Now GM actually tells you to do plug it into the adapter first then the car, but I'm gonna do the opposite direction. I'm plugged in, now I'm gonna activate on the app. All right, everybody, so here it is in the app. You find the location, you go down and you click charge here. Once you get there, you find the dispenser you're at. My was at 3D and you click start charging. Obviously, you wanna make sure you connect the adapter, plug it in. I cut out a little bit of this part, but it took about 24 seconds and then we were charging. All right, everybody, we are plugged in. It is charging, as you can see with the green light. Let's go in, see what speeds we're getting. All right, we're at 49% state of charge, getting 112 kilowatts, 106 now, but we are charging. Things are looking good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let this charge up a few percent. I just wanna see what price is charged when you use GM. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show how to activate with the Tesla app and uh, we're gonna see kind of what the difference is. I do know the price difference, uh, at what this would be if you had the membership, and I'll share all those numbers later. So we're up to 58% now, 80 kilowatts. I'm gonna stop the charge, stop charge. All right, I'm gonna get it out of the car. So um, with this, I'm using the Electron right now. I don't have the official one yet, but I will eventually. Um, so it's really blurry. There we go. So you just take this part out first. Here we go. This is obviously my first time. Oh, there's a there's a lock. My bad. There's a lock on the bottom. I'm gonna have to use. I hope you all enjoy this beautiful footage. There we go. Popped right out. So that worked really well. Sorry about the camera work. And then push this button. Pop it out. And that worked really nice. So now what I'm gonna do? I'm going to um, charge it using the supercharger app. So I'm gonna do the reverse, do what GM says. So I put it in first and then I put it in the car. And now I'm gonna activate on the Tesla app. All right, everybody, I plugged in 3D. I used the Tesla app and we are charging and that worked really nicely. Um, sorry, the, the, the headlights are kind of making the shot a little weird. Uh, but that worked really nicely and it was actually really fast. Um, I didn't time it, but it was, I mean, I want to say five seconds, definitely less than 10 seconds. Um, so one day I'll actually time it and get a, a nice uh, time on how long it took, but that was impressive. Um, as of right now, it might be the better bet to use the Tesla app. So I'm in the car here, we're charging at 60%, 83 kilowatts. I'm not gonna stay here too long cause I can, I can charge at home, so I don't need to charge here. Uh, so here we are, 60% charging up, ready in 15 minutes. Uh, worth noting, uh, these aren't the most ideal charging speeds at this state of charge, uh, but I did plug in at a higher state of charge, which I've never plugged in at 50%. So that could be normal if you plug in at a higher state of charge. Uh, so I can't, I can't say that it's not charging to its full potential right now because that could be a factor. So um, one day I'll, I'll be able to run it lower and see if it works, but I have charged on a Magic Dock charger and it was perfectly fine and the speeds were, were adequate. All right, everybody. So again, if you wanna stop a charge, I would recommend doing it this way. Do not cut it off from the charger itself. I'll press stop charge and then it'll stop the charge and then you can go out 
and unplug everything. All right, everybody, so I went ahead and did both those methods. So then afterwards, I wasn't able to record because I only had one camera with me, but I went and timed how long it took from um, activation on the Tesla app to car starting to charge, and it was about six seconds, six or seven seconds, which is super fast. So this is definitely a much better experience, in my opinion, when you're using the Tesla app to activate the charging. All right, everybody, so um, I wanna talk about should you use the, the My Chevy app or the, the My GM app, depending upon which vehicle you have, or should you use the Tesla app to activate? And in my opinion, after my experience I had today, I, I feel like you should use the Tesla app to activate. Um, this is why. Uh, first off, the from pressing start charge to the vehicle actually charging was about six or seven seconds. Uh, the Chevy app took much longer. I didn't time it because it was it was longer. Um, the, the Tesla one was much shorter. So that is a consideration because it's quick, efficient, and works really well comparatively. The GM app also, when I was using it, it was, it was a little bit slow. Um, I actually had to restart the app completely because I had some issues uh, and then I was able to get in. Next, the reason why I think you should use the Tesla charging app. I went ahead and I did the uh, both methods so I could see how much it would actually charge. And if you use the GM app, the My GM app for me, my Chevy, uh, it charges you the rack rate of 51 cents. If you use the Tesla app, you can pay for the membership and you can get a discounted rate. And at this particular charger, the discounted rate goes from 51, sorry, the discounted rate is from 51 cents, it goes down to 39 cents. So that's a pretty big difference. It's a, a, a 12 cent difference. So if you want to save money, you know, that's a big deal. So it's about, you know, 25-ish percent cheaper. So I would highly recommend use the Tesla app. Don't use the MyGM app. Um, I don't think that is the route to go in my personal opinion. Um, that's that. Now, one thing I wanted to say regarding this whole experience is I really think it's a big miss for um, GM that they did not make it a plug-in charge experience. Um, again, I was having some phone issues. If I didn't have phone service, I wouldn't be able to activate the charge. So if I'm in the middle of nowhere and I don't have good enough phone service, then I am sorry out of luck and I'm not gonna be able to charge. So GM, if you're watching this, probably not, but if you're watching this, uh, please make plug and charge a priority because it's gonna be a major, major issue uh, for your customers eventually uh, if there isn't good enough service. Now, hopefully all of them have good service. Maybe that's how they pick the locations. I really don't know, but um, yeah, I, I see that as being a potential issue, especially since we're gonna take the Equinox all the way to uh, LA next summer. So hopefully that doesn't happen to us. All right, everybody, so um, so I was able to do this video. I already had the Electron um, adapter. Uh, this is not the most favorite adapter that people have been using. Uh, probably the one people like the most is the A to Z adapter. Sorry about the blurry video. There it is. It's the A to Z adapter. I don't have that and can't test that quite yet, um, but obviously Tesla is also going to have their adapter that will be provided by GM. So uh, basically, if you want to get that adapter, you have to go the whole process. You go into the, the GM app, whichever, I'm sure it's pretty similar for all. I'm showing the My Chevy app. You go in there, you go to public charging, you'll see Tesla Supercharging's now there. Once you get there, you're going to activate it. Once you go through that process to activate it and you pick a payment method, then it'll kind of have a link where you can click and you can order the charger. You click that, you follow through and you can order the charger and that is the one that is provided by Tesla. It's $225, which is a lot. Uh, and just in comparison, the A to Z adapter, which seems to be a little bit better as far as um, functionality because you can basically unplug it with one hand. Um, that one's like $197 right now. So it's cheaper to get the third party adapter. Uh, but it's always nice to go through and get the appropriate one, especially until we hear anything about whether you can use third party adapters or not. Um, also worth noting, you know, when you get your Equinox or your other um, GM product, you get those, the points. So I actually used my Chevy points and I paid for half of the adapter with those. So it only ended up being about 125 bucks. So that's not terrible. And I feel like that was a good use of my points. All right, so I want to just do a couple quick considerations when you're using a Tesla supercharger. So first, obviously you want to try, if you can, and park to the right of the furthest right 
um, charger and use that if you can. Uh, if you can't, it is what it is. Like it's your right to charge. You're a paying customer, so you charge. But if you can, try and help everybody in the community out by using that charger. Now the next thing I noticed, at least for the Equinox, and this is probably true of um, all the um, all team vehicles that have the charge port in the front left, the Silverado has it on the rear right. Uh, but anyways, you have to get really close. So you can actually see um, I have I'm kind of past the charger. Uh, not all chargers and charging locations are you able to do that. So I see that potentially being an issue um, at some locations, being able to get close enough to charge. Um, this is a little elevated too, as you can see there, uh, but here it's, it's pretty okay, but I wish that um, I didn't have to get as close, but we'll see uh, as I charge in the wild how things go and um, if I'm gonna be able to charge every single charger without having to like drive up over the curb. So uh, that is definitely a consideration you want to have. All right, everybody, so that is my experience here with the Equinox EV charging on the Tesla Supercharger Network. It worked really, really well. Um, I would definitely recommend if you have the option to choose Supercharger over Electrify America, that you choose Tesla Supercharger and that you uh, activate using the app. That way you can get that discount. I believe it's $12.99 for the membership, which is more expensive than um, the EA membership, but you're getting a better experience in my opinion. Even just from like the activation standpoint, that was a, a much better experience. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will answer them as I can, and I will catch you all next time.